Boyfriend plays weird, anxiety-inducing games by changing his appearance without warning causing me severe stress due to my blindness. I've been with my BF for almost a year now. I love him dearly, and he loves me too, I'm guessing, but there's one thing that's causing a lot of issues for us. I suffer from prosopagnosia slash face blindness, which means it's really hard for me to recognize people's faces. I usually go by other characteristics to put a name to a person, like hairstyle slash facial hair, marks, skin colors, accessories, etc. but it's still really tough. It's caused me severe anxiety and other mental health struggles. I'm lucky to have wonderful people around me though, who are aware and try to help. They'll introduce themselves when we start talking, where something they know I've linked to them, or whatever. Usually my BF does this too, but sometimes he likes to test me and it's incredibly stressful. He shaved of his beard once, a few times he wore a completely different style of clothing, or changed his hairstyle, all without warning me. In those moments he won't tell me who he is, or say someone else's name, just to see if I'll figure out it's him. He'll make jokes saying he'll try to switch with one of his friends and see if I'll stay loyal. I usually do realize it's him, but it causes me a lot of anxiety. We've had big fights on this. He says he's allowed to change his look, I'm not a cartoon character, I ask him to warn me. Don't get me wrong. He cares about me, but I don't think he gets how stressful it is. How do I make it clear? We have a lot of great times together, there's just this bump, need to let him be him. That he always tells me when he's been joking and if he was really keen on hurting me he'd just do things and not tell me, so him telling proves he cares. That one got me v uncomfortable, at one point he said he just wanted to test if it was real, because I could just be using it as an excuse to do anything. I left after that cause we were just going in circles. There was a lot of me making an issue of one small thing. I'm exhausted. He's still blowing up my phone with love and apologies, but you guys made me realize a lot. Thanks, really. I'm trying to stay rational about it but it's hard, because I do care about him a lot. I'm gonna get a few hours of sleep. Update 2. Things went batshit crazy. A lot has happened in the last days. I'm really grateful to you all, honestly. I wasn't aware about the real meaning of his pranks and what it said about him and our relationship. I went to talk to him the same evening I made that post, with the intention of making clear he can't pull all that anymore. The conversation escalated. We talked for hours into the night and every day since. There's been a lot of messages. He got angry about the Reddit post I made, I showed him, angry at you guys, angry that I couldn't take a joke and listen to strangers. Said things like he in the beginning didn't believe I actually suffered from it, and would use it as an excuse to cheat on him. That now he does believe, but, due to bad breakups in the past, he has a hard time trusting I won't use it as an excuse regardless. Said he was joking about it because he wanted to make a tough situation lighter and that's just his sense of humor. That if I loved him, I'd accept that. When I made it clear I was done, it got even worse. He began apologizing a lot. Said he didn't realize it was such a big thing for me, again, didn't make any sense with all said before, in the same breath he said that he at least told me. To the people who thought he actually had PL, and to trick me by using one of his friends, I think y'all may be very right, to be honest I was done. I do care about him a lot, can't just shut that off, but it's never going to work. There's been many many messages slash calls slash etc. He dropped some vague hints that sometimes he pulled pranks I wasn't aware of. I don't know if that is true, or he's just in a bad place right now. He also came to my place to apologize again. But I suspect he didn't expect I'd immediately recognize him, as he didn't apologize till I said his name. He's not evil, but just very messed up RN. I blocked him everywhere, told him not to show up anymore and that a friend would give him his stuff. I'm going to delete this account soon but, I wanted to thank you guys for helping me realize it. I genuinely don't think I would have. I'm heartbroken, but a bit relieved as well. Update 3. It's been a wee bit, and since I'm still getting messages about this, I thought I'd just give one big update for this. So more than a month ago I broke up with my BF because he kept pulling pranks involving my face blindness. I can't recognize faces and I'm dependent on other aspects to recognize someone, and even then it's still confusing, after that he'd been bugging me that he wanted to meet up, so we could get some closure. My gut was telling me not to, but I felt guilty. With you guys' advice, and my own gut feeling, in mind, I decided not to go. I asked a friend, Roger, to go bring him his stuff and kept him blocked, including blocking the new accounts he'd made. Roger came back with a letter from him, to me. The letter in itself was via apologetic. He even said he was grateful for our time together and took full responsibility. It ended with him saying he'd respect it if I chose not to reply or message. Honestly, a lot of very respectful words. I still decided not to get in touch. Still trying to get over the breakup myself, but I did appreciate it, till I found out he wasn't letting go like, he said. Roger and some other mutual friends let me know he was asking them about me a lot, if I had read the letter, if I was seeing someone else, already? And so on. Couple of days ago he showed up at my place. He was clearly not sober and v upset. He just seemed so broken, so I, stupidly, let him in. For a while he was just being miserably nice, while I got him water and stuff. But the more sober, the more angry he got. At that point I messaged basically everyone I knew to come. 
I didn't think he'd hurt me, but I didn't feel comfortable being alone with him regardless. Among the many accusations of me not even having the decency to reply, that I clearly never cared about him and that I was a horrendous person, he told me I cheated on him and didn't even know it so how could I blame him for not trusting me? I'm not gonna lie, I was trying to stay calm but failed. And I know I should have not lost my cool, I screamed at him, asked him what he was talking about. Apparently on a night out with him and others, he asked his friend Mike, who knows of my face blindness and has similar characteristics as my ex, apart from a V different voice and smell, to swap out with him, and kissed me. And I didn't know. I don't know if he's lying or not. But knowing I was drinking and in a crowded, loud room, I know it's a possibility. Especially since Mike tried to kiss me another time, though then I immediately realized it was him and lost my shit at him. When I told my then BF, he was more angry than I had ever seen him, so I'd if that time was a plan as well or not. Either way Mike is a disgusting human, I know it's just a kiss, but it did make me feel sick to my stomach just thinking about how they might have played me. I told him to get out, he didn't. Luckily it didn't take long for some people to arrive and get him out. I'm endlessly grateful for the people I have around me. I'm staying at my parents' place now, took a break from work and I'm looking into therapy. My mom and dad, who got a tattoo years ago just so I would never doubt it's him, are treating me like a princess and reminding me of the kindness people deserve. Haven't looked into a restraining order, but might if it continues. Thanks to you all for helping me see what's right in this situation. Reddit has been a wonderful community I am very grateful for. I probably won't update anymore, as this is over and done with. But I'm glad I got to pour my heart out to y'all. Update 4. We broke up nearly 3 months ago, it wasn't pretty. There were a lot of things not right between us. Among other things, he kept messing slash joking with the fact that I have a severe case of face blindness. I wasn't perfect in this relationship either btw, not trying to make him the villain, usually I go by voice, obvious traits and so on. I'm lucky enough to have a lot of wonderful people around me who'll introduce themselves once we start talking, warn me if they change their looks or even get slash wear something that'll help me, like my dad who got a tattoo, just for me, but it's still hard and gives me so much anxiety. So maybe I'm imagining it all? I stayed with my parents and we cousins for a while after the breakup but since I'm home, I feel like he's still around. The first time, I went to a club with a friend and her BF, started dancing with a guy and went outside with him to get some air. The moment we stepped outside and I heard his voice, I knew it was him. I was so sure. I freaked, went inside again and left with my friend. I messaged him later and he denied it vehemently, telling me he was not even near there. That we can meet up and talk if I want. My friend says she's not sure, she was off with her BF and didn't see him. So maybe I am wrong. My gut says it was him, but I can't trust my brain with these things. There's been more incidents like this since. If I go out, sometimes I just feel like he's there. Like I'll see a guy focused on me and will know it's him, but he'll deny it. Or someone why, LL come to my job and I'll recognize the voice, but he responds so confused and I'll feel like a crazy person making a scene, so I just quietly give him what he needs. I'll go to the grocery store and a guy will suddenly be next to me. He won't even say anything to me, but the smell slash traits tell me it's him. But then later he denies it all. It's not every day, or something. Once a week, maybe not even that. But it's enough to make me feel so on edge. The thing is, I could be wrong. Maybe it was never him. I don't go out a lot anymore, unless I'm with someone. I keep my phone in my hand in hopes of snapping a picture to show to my friends. Looking into how to get a camera. I don't know what else to do, really. I'm afraid if I talk to others about it, they'll simply dismiss it. At the same time he's still messaging me, just as kindly as when we first started dating. He says he's worried about me, that he wants to help. And I just feel. Like I'm going crazy. Maybe I am. I have a quite severe case of face blindness, but have my own ways to get around, like all of us. But still I can never be completely sure who's in front of me until they confirm it, I'm sure you know the feeling. Now I have had wonderful people in my life who make it so much easier for me. But have you had people who don't do that? My previous BF messed with me sometimes and I sometimes worry he might still be. But it's hard to be sure, when I can't trust what I see. Sometimes I'm so sure it's him, but he'll deny it and I can never convince myself to be 100% certain of what I saw. Now second story, I fell asleep in my roommate's bed because I was sick and my girlfriend broke up with me my girlfriend Celine, 20F, and I, 21M, have been dating for about 7 months now, but I had feelings for her for like 3 years beforehand. I have also been sharing a flat with 2 other girls and 1 other guy. One of the girls is Kaya, and we're pretty good friends. As it just so happens, Celine's ex cheated on her wit, H Kaya. Kaya hadn't known they were together at the time. So when I first brought Celine over to my place earlier into our relationship, she told me about what had happened. I realized then that things would be messy and I asked Celine if this was a deal breaker for her, but she said she wasn't sure as she was aware that Kaya didn't realize she was facilitating cheating. The next day, Celine said she thought it over and that she held no resentment towards Kaya but was insecure about herself and felt uneasy that we lived in the same house. We both agreed to continue with the relationship and set our boundaries. One of them was that Kaya and I won't sleep over in each other's rooms anymore. 
We used to have movie nights on Fridays, Kaya's room was the only room with a TV in my flat, and I'd sometimes fall asleep in her room during movie nights. Everything was platonic and I told Celine about this. Let's move to the present time where our relationship is like a fairy tale. Being with Celine is pretty awesome. But my exams are coming up soon, and because I'm horribly underprepared, I needed to lock in. So I told Celine I would have to be a bit selfish and wouldn't be able to spend time with her or have much communication till they're done. For the past three weeks, my life has been, wake up, spend the entire day slash night at the library, then come home to sleep for like five to six hours, then go study again. It's a horrible routine and I feel like a zombie, but I have too much content to catch up on and not enough time. I must also admit that I've not been in contact with Celine all that often. We only talked twice on FaceTime and texted very little, she tried initiating but I had my phone shut off while studying and only replied when I left the library, on our second call she said she felt neglected and it was really starting to get to her and she wanted to spend some time together. I apologized, told her I missed her too and that she could come over to spend the night. But she came a, about an hour later than she was supposed to and I fell asleep by then. She still stayed the night, but the next morning I felt that she was upset I fell asleep. Then I got really sick three days ago. I threw up at the library and asked Kaya to come pick me up. My other roommates are out of town, and Celine would have taken too long to get there. When I got into bed, I threw up all over my sheets. At this point, my memory of what happens is foggy. I was very drowsy and not thinking straight. Rather than cleaning up and setting new sheets, I texted Celine I was very sick and had vomited over my bed and asked if I could sleep over at hers. I got no reply, so I went downstairs and slept on the couch. When I woke up the next morning, I was asleep on Kaya's bed shirtless. I had no clue how I got here. But Celine came to check up on me, and walked in on me like this. This was when I woke up, and Celine was very upset. She yelled how could you and before I had chance to say anything, she left. Kaya told me that when she saw me asleep on the couch, she offered to let me sleep on her bed instead, I have no recollection of this. I probably took my shirt off because I felt hot at some point during the night. She also said she slept on the couch and we didn't share the bed. I've been trying to reach out to Celine but she blocked my number, WhatsApp, Insta. We have two mutual friends but they both haven't replied to any of my texts. My fever died down yesterday night, so I went to Celine's to clarify the situation but her roommate said she wasn't going to talk and made me leave. This whole situation just feels so horrible. I love the relationship that I have slash had with Celine and the fact that it's probably over makes me feel so distraught. I also reflected over how I've been recently and I realized that a lot of blame goes on me. My exams aren't a reason to just completely shut myself out of my relationship and I need to work on being able to juggle life and studies at the same t. Me. Other than her finding me asleep on Kaya's bed, she probably had a lot of animosity and upset amalgamating over the last three weeks of me not being in contact. It's painful knowing I made a very unnecessary decision and had I put in more effort, it wouldn't have cost me a great person out of my life. Update 1. The reason I'm posting this is because I saw Celine for the final time a couple days ago, and I also want to clear the air on some matters. For the sake of tracking time, let's call day 1 the day Celine broke up with me. Day 4 was when my initial post was published. I sat my final exam at day 7, and didn't actually check up on the post at all till day 8. I was very, very shocked reading the comments. To be blatantly honest, I wasn't expecting like a thousand people calling me a huge bellend. I knew I made a mistake, but in my head, I thought I was a good person. You know how you just kinda perceive yourself to always try and do things with a good intention, so you think you can't ever be a bad person? I'd if that makes sense. But reading the post opened up my perspective and made me realize that the relationship was not salvageable, and also gave me depth on the hurt I caused Celine. I shattered her trust completely and was just not a good boyfriend for an entire month leading to the breakup. So, I just didn't contact her. As I'll mention later on, I was not in a good headspace and I distanced myself because I was an even bigger ass than I let on previously. On day 12, she messaged me to ask for her iPad back, she'd let me borrow it for my notes. We last met on day 15 when she came to collect it, among other things. We were both silent the whole time she was there, which must have only been like 5 minutes or so. She returned some of my stuff I'd left in her apartment, and when she was about to leave, I told her I was sorry. She said okay. I said I never meant to hurt her. She, again, just said okay. I figured nothing I could say was the right thing at this point, and we said goodbye. So like I said, the very expected outcome occurred. I can't lie and say that I'm instantaneously a better person now, I'm not. I want to be better but I can't become a better person in a couple of weeks and will need to really work on my character in general. As for Celine, I can only just pray and wish for the best for her. I'm going to answer some of the main questions that people had. I never went into the full depth of the story because there is a lot of context behind it all and I just never expected the post to reach so many people. Yes. I told her the day Celine and I discussed our boundaries. She seemed to be very understanding and we both kept distance since. It was from dehydration. On day one, I went to the hospital at noon because my condition wasn't getting any better. I had a temperature of 104 and a blood test showed I was severely dehydrated, and I was put on a drip. 
None of this was mentioned because I never expected this to be a matter of criticism and thought very ill sufficed for it in my previous post. This is the question which needs a lot of context to understand, and I'll do my best to provide it now. I'm Indian, and my father is very similar to those strict Indian dads that you'll often see portrayed in movies. Take every Indian dad stereotype and you'll get my dad. He's in the military and is about as strict a man as you can imagine. He wanted slash tried forcing me to join the army. I wanted to choose my own career path, which was in computer science and we had a huge rift occur between us because of it. I moved from India to the UK for my studies, and one of the only reasons he agreed to pay for my tuition fees was because a, the university had gotten into is prestigious, so he was happy with that and b, he had a way to monitor my grades and could use this as leverage to make me study harder. In year one, I did not do so splendidly. I finished with a grade average of 63%, which although is like the median score, upset my duh, d, a lot. He got extremely physical and smacked me in the face a few times, and I had some bruises after. He also threatened to not pay for my final year if I didn't get an average of 70% this year, which would mean that the entire two years I've spent here would go to waste. I'm an international student, so I can't get a loan either. Furthermore, I did really bad on my summatives earlier in the year. I got a 41 on an exam worth 13% of my entire grade, and a 52 and 59 on two others worth 6% each. Celine also knows everything about my dad. We had a whole conversation before I went absent in our relationship, where I told her I was very far behind on my studies and was afraid of the consequences this would cause. We agreed I should try and study as much as I can till my exams were over, and she said she'd be fine with being in contact less often. Very simply put, I was a bad boyfriend. This is going to sound awful, but I think a part of me was just didn't want to have to deal with being in a relationship. I was overwhelmed and it felt like a burden having to talk to someone. I completely acknowledge how horrible that is of me to even think. When I had those thoughts, I just downplayed them and let myself believe it was just me being cranky. Anyway, there's just never an excuse to go weeks without talking to your GF and I was an asshole for doing that. However, I never, under any circumstances, had any intentions of cheating on her. I didn't want to deal with anyone period, and so I didn't want to be around Kaya either. I mention this because a lot of people speculated that Kaya and I had something going on, which isn't the case. I just wanted to be alone till my exams were over. I asked her, and she said the following, I was on my way out to an overnight study session, which meant no one would be home, so I thought you might as well sleep on my bed then. I didn't think it would be such a big deal considering how bad of a condition you were in. I thought Celine would understand. I didn't get in the bed when I got home, I slept on the couch I could not sleep in my roommate's bed because they were out of town and locked their rooms. Kaya throws parties every once in a while, so they lock their rooms in case. I think that's as much as I can say about this now. There's not a great deal more to add rather than an apology to those who read all of this and still aren't content with my answers. As for what happens next, I don't think I'll be sprinting into a new relationship anytime soon. I'm long overdue some self-reflection and along with trying to enjoy my summer holidays, I hope I can figure myself out and try and do better from now on. In her situation, I would have stripped your bed so the sick wouldn't fester and throw it in the washer. I would have checked in that you didn't need to go to the hospital, put out something to drink and some painkillers. I would have contacted Celine and let her know how you were doing and that you would probably really appreciate if she dropped by to check in on you. No boundaries disrespected, I don't risk getting sick, sick you won't have a nasty surprise in the morning. 